When it comes to NHL draft picks outside the top 100, the reality is that most of them just aren't going to make it to the NHL. Some will have it, some won't. Some will get the development they need, and some won't. But the majority will come up short. And the Avs know that better than anyone, having failed to develop even a single one in the past decade. However, there are multiple options in their system currently that look promising, including Sasha Mutala. Mutala was taken by the Avs in the fifth round of the 2019 NHL Draft, 140th overall, which was a big fall for him after a very down draft year. He had at one point been ranked as high as the late first round. There were various issues both on and off the ice with him in his draft year, but he proved the Avs right in taking a swing with him, as he showed a lot of the reasons he was so highly touted at one point this year. Mutala was the man this year for the Tri-City Americans, and that's both good and bad. Good that he was able to fully step up and take that role, bad because the Tri-City Americans were absolutely awful. Despite an extremely weak team around him, Mutala just took the league by storm this year. He would make that offense go some nights almost entirely by himself. For a fifth round pick, he really has a lot of nice skills that you love to see. Yes, the high powered offense is there, but he also works extremely hard not only in the offensive zone, but in the defensive zone, is never afraid to go to the dirty areas of the ice and is always willing to do basically whatever needs to be done. His ability to not only create for himself, but set up his teammates also is a very nice addition. If he can make players on that team score, he can make just about anybody score. This created a bit of a double-edged sword for Mutala. On the one hand, he was given more and more and more playing time as the season went on, playing in all situations, both power play and PK when it came to special teams. That's great. You want to allow a player to develop, have them play a lot, and have them play in various situations. Definitely a big plus on that side. The other thing is, when he's out there all the time and everything is feeding through him, sometimes it's harder to discern exactly what his numbers mean when he's getting that much opportunity. Even so, Mutala grabbed every single opportunity by the horns, ripping off multiple five-game point streaks, one as long as 12 this year, and really only had one short little down period right near the end of the season. Outside of that, he never went even three games without a point. And obviously, points and stats are great to look at and fun, but maybe more importantly for someone drafted in the fifth round and projected to be the type of player Mutala is likely going to be in the NHL is those other things I mentioned. The hard work ethic and the willingness to do whatever it takes. Realistically, there's a good chance he ends up as a role player if he does make the NHL. And those are abilities that you basically just need to have. One of the few drawbacks Mutala did have this season was he did have a penchant to get banged up a little bit here and there. He never missed major games, but a couple here, a couple there, especially in the first half of the year, did slow him down a little bit. Nonetheless, the second half of the year, he did seem to pick it up for quite a stretch, starting to not only shoot the puck more, but produce more goals and show off what was really a pretty dangerous shot. One thing I love to see in prospects is versatility. The more avenues you can create to get yourself to that next level, the better shot you're going to have, and ultimately the more roles you'll be able to fill for any given team. And that's exactly what Mutala has done. If you want to project him as a Colin Wilson type third line-ish player who can produce goals and maybe play on a second power play, you can if you want to project him as maybe more of a well-rounded Matt Calvert type, high energy, can play defense, but is just going to be a whirlwind out on the ice, you can also do that. If you have a ton of faith in him, you can maybe even project him as more of a middle six player with 40 to 50 point upside. I wouldn't go that far, personally. I lean the most towards probably a Matt Calvert-esque type of player, but him showing off that shot at the end of the year gave me some encouragement that maybe there's a little bit more offense there. Realistically, the question for him at this point is, what does he do when he starts to play with better players? Will we see him produce even more because he can feed off of that, they can play off of each other and everybody wins? Or will we see him get less opportunities and just simply produce less?
We don't know that yet. What we do know is he had a heck of a year on a weak team. On the season, Sasha Mutala had 28 goals and 39 assists for 67 points in 62 games for the Tri-City Americans in the WHL. Based on that, as a whole, on his season, I'm giving him an A- minus grade, and that's a very solid A- minus at that. Mutala basically did everything that the Avs could have asked out of him. Taken in the fifth round, he showed some of the talent that they knew he had, and he lived up to expectations. He showed he can be pretty effective almost anywhere in the offensive zone, and keeps up with a good pace of play and willingness to do what it takes. There are only really two two and a half, I suppose, drawbacks to his game, and one of those is entirely not his own fault. We just don't know what he looks like in a better team, with likely less opportunity for him and better players around him. Secondly, and this one is one of my biggest concerns with him right now, just too much of his production came on the power play this year. He needs to be able to produce more at 5-on-5 five five for reasons I earlier described. There's a very real possibility that at the next level, he doesn't play power play at all. Of course, the flip side of that is he also gets to play on the PK, so it's not like he would be going into that type of role completely blind. And maybe that half mark off for the couple of injuries he had, not really worth a full negative there, but playing beat up at times as well something he's going to have to work on staying healthy if he wants to be more of an impact player. With those negatives being said, Mutala really, though, played great on the season and, in my opinion, did more than enough to earn a contract from the Avalanche. Hopefully they get all that sorted out. He does have his likely final year of juniors left ahead of him coming next season, and then we'll see what he has at the professional level of hockey. For the Avs, they need someone like Mutala to be successful. They have a couple of bullets in the chamber in the organization right now, but it's time. This organization needs to develop a depth draft pick. That is the end of this player's season review. Thank you for watching. I'm sure all y'all know the drill right now. If you're not watching this at thednvr.com, Head on over, be sure to check it out. If you like the content from YouTube, consider subscribing to the site for more content. I am Rudo, and I never thought I would ever say this about hockey, but is it August yet?